another quick Enigma update. Um, I've started reprinting the uh, the sides of what I call the rotor holder, which is these bits here, uh, just to make them a bit more rigid. So previously I had them sort of ribbed, but I've just made them full thickness now. And the other thing I realized is a lot of the force that's pushing on it is moving the whole thing over. And because I've got these rotor holders, this is actually for where the, the two spare rotors fit, I've reprinted this piece with a, a little piece that pushes up against here, because what I've discovered is if you push this back that way, the mechanism works a lot better. It's not bending. You, you can see the movement in there. Uh, the other thing I've done is added an extra, an extra, I guess you'd call this an ear off each piece, so I can add another aluminium support bar, which will go in the front here, just fit under the the back of the lamp board, so you won't see that. So, on my printer, a print like this, I print these to be fairly solid. It's about a five and a half hour print, and this is one of the problems I find with 3D printing, is it can be pretty unreliable, uh, often through no fault of your own. So this was the first one I tried printing and the filament actually got tangled up. What I've found is every so often you'll get a reel of filament where the, the, the filament is actually looped on itself and you'll get to a certain point and it just gets stuck, pulls itself in a knot and then uh, it just doesn't print anymore. Uh, the second attempt, which was this one, I'd obviously got about five hours into the print and the filament snapped. Um, it wasn't jammed up on the reel, I have no idea why it happened to snap at that point, but this one now is a successful print. Um, I did that one this morning, it took about five and a half hours. I'm just waiting for all of this to cool down and then I can sort of pop it off the glass and start printing out the other side. Uh, I've also fitted these, but I haven't, I haven't bolted them down because you screw them on from the other side. But these were my reinforced supports for the springs on the compensator. And you can see how just printing that little rib there stops them, stops them bending. So, again, as I've mentioned, with these machines, a lot of it is just printing things, figuring out where they're weak, reprinting them all strengthened up just trying to make slow improvements to the machine as you go. Um, one of the other jobs I, I've realized I can do now that I haven't done, I've been putting it off, is actually make all the cabling. Um, everything set up, I just need to actually do all of the wiring and actually make all the cables. There's just hundreds and hundreds of these little uh, crimp connections to make. A couple of hundred, I guess. Um, so that's another job I can actually start doing. And I want all the wiring to be neat as well, which is why I've sort of cable laced it together. Um, and I'm using thin, flexible silicone wires. So I'm just going to wait for this to cool down, and then I'm going to reprint the other side. So this is the right-hand side. I still need to print the left-hand side. I finally managed to print both the end pieces and I also made up another stiffening bar across the front of the machine. Uh, you can see it just clears the rotors. But between the thicker sides, the extra support there, and also this little piece here, which pushes up against the um, spare rotor holder, this is far more rigid. It just feels a lot more rigid as well. Uh, I still do have the problem where it misses steps occasionally. Of course, it never fails when you demo it. There. And that is still entirely down to the fact that these, these poles are just being dropped by gravity. So... I still need to fix that um, by putting little springs on them, basically. That should be pretty easy to do. Uh, the other thing I need to modify slightly is the profile on this ramp on the reflector, because at the moment it 
it isn't quite um, it isn't quite going far enough back to let me pull out the the rotor stack cleanly. It's a little bit of a struggle. Um, you can see there it's kind of getting caught up on the pogo pins. So I could actually just take a millimeter or so off the end of the shaft and that'd probably be enough. But because this reflector is kind of modular, it's probably easy enough for me to change the profile on the ramp here and um, make this go back further. So this hopefully there's going to be enough force on that now for everything to make contact when these are all stacked. Uh, the only way to tell is to finish it off and see. But I'm pleased with how that's come out. I haven't actually checked to see if the um, the top still fits on. Um, and if the lamp board still fits in place, we can try that now. That usually goes... Somewhere like that. I have to screw it in from the bottom. Um, when I took it all apart and put it back together again, it turns out I actually had a couple of screws loose. So I've fixed that now. And I believe with that there, with the keyboard. Well, that's nice. The cover still fits. So I will, I'll leave the lamp board off for now uh, because I'm going to need to take this apart again to get to the, the bottom of the pawls to make the springs. And if I can struggle to get this out. I may just actually shorten the shafts because it's actually a millimeter or so it'll focus a millimeter or so too long on that end um, so we'll see that's fixable anyway I think it'll be easier to get this to go back a bit further but you can see how I've just got the weights here I think what I'll do is I'll reprint these little supports which you need there because that's what the the poles actually pivot around so they tip up on those little circular things but um, what I can do is instead of having three separate little pieces there I'll print a new piece that has uh, a hole going through it so I can put it push through a little piece of brass rod um, probably brass brazing rod 1.6 millimeter diameter all the way through and then I can hook little springs onto onto these and that'll, that'll give me the, the tension you need so this is all sprung anyway because of the, the compensator so you just have to make sure the, the tension on these three springs down here is weaker than the springs on this and these are quite strong uh, you can see they're quite stretched there so that'll be the next job but um, it's, it's definitely a lot more rigid now with these new end pieces. Just a little bit more on this Enigma machine. Um, starting to get quite messy in here. Sort of as if the machines exploded and there were parts everywhere. But I think I'm making progress. I um, was looking at the machine. Oops, my vice just fell off. And discovered there were actually... Uh, a few things that weren't exactly right that I've fixed up. Um, I did start playing with printing new little supports. Uh, these would go down in here and these are basically the pivot point that the, the poles rock across the top of. 
uh, that's what gives them the that sort of rocking motion. And the idea was there'd be a little bolt through here and I could put a spring between this and that. And I did try that, but it turns out the the motion wasn't quite right, so it was quite hard to get the springing correct. Um, I ended up looking at the machine a bit more, and I did print out these thicker end plates, and also added the extra bar, so that's made everything a lot stiffer. Um, I also discovered that my original reflector, which is this part here, um, I didn't have the dimensions quite right, and when you engage the reflector to compress the stack, it was actually pushing it too far. And it was pushing the rotors over too far to the right, which is why the poles were actually rubbing. And it also wasn't making contact very well. So what I've actually done is I've redesigned the reflector so that the pogo pins now stick out about a millimeter more. Um, there's still plenty of compression on them. They don't compress all the way in, but I don't think they should. Um, because of the way I've built it, it's actually relatively easy to make this sort of change. So uh, there's a printed circuit board that sits on here. So to um, move the pins out, all I had to do was reprint this slightly higher and then print a slightly thinner um, top cover. So that's helped with the positioning of the pins. The other thing I've done is I've reprofiled the little ramps on the bottom there. So uh, it's probably quite hard to see the difference. This was the original one. You can see the ramp starts in line with that screw. Whereas on here it's offset slightly. And that means that the reflector, if I can get it on there, actually goes back further to the left when it's not engaged. Um, the other thing I did on this one is I shortened the ramp so I can control how far this gets pushed along by the how far up this ramp goes. I've actually shortened it on this one um, but I think I've shortened it too much which is why I'm currently printing another one. The other thing I did was shorten the the axle by a millimeter on either end and it just makes it a bit easier for me to now uh, get it lined up to now drop the rotor stack in place and you can see um, this is now Um, it's kind of loose at the moment because there's no contacts on this side so the pins are actually dropping into the holes in the rotor so it won't move but if you imagine there are pins there um, which, oh, if we get it in the right place you can see that's under the pin tension there so you can see if you put too much tension on there it's trying to bend the rotors too much it just dropped into the holes again but um, this one that I'm printing the ramp here is a millimeter longer and you can see that should put almost exactly the right amount of tension on things I may have to play with that a bit more by varying this ramp height but I'm getting a lot closer I won't really know exactly what it should be until I've finished building the rotors and put all of the um, the pogo pins and the contacts in there but oops that's not helping um, you can see now though that the the poles actually have the right sort of clearance to the uh, the edge of the rotors, the thumb wheels. I do need to reattach the the lamp board and these are the little stands with the springs that um, 
lift the compensator back up. But that actually now works um, how it should do again. And it was like that originally when I first built it. I, I deliberately built it with enough clearance there that it um, that they wouldn't rub. So now that that's all a lot better, I think the next job, and it's the one I keep putting off, is start doing the rotors. But I'll, I'll wait till this print finishes first. Uh, the other thing I've looked at doing is I've discovered one of the disadvantages of having a small electronics lab without any windows is ventilation. So obviously it gets quite hot in here, um, especially with the way the, the windows are facing. So I ended up um, buying this extractor fan, sort of 150 mil inlet and outlet fan with a with three speed settings. Um, this will be more essential when I start doing more soldering and laser cutting and things like that. And I've also read somewhere that the 3D printer actually puts out plastic particles into the air which are probably not great to be breathing in. So the idea with this is I'll probably get a wooden board that I can fit into the door, into the door frame. So you slide the door open, put the board in place and then close it. So that the um, the little fan can um, extract air, probably blow it out. Um, I don't know if it's better at the top or the bottom, but it'll it'll um, suck air from the end of a, a piece of venting like this. I need to get a much longer piece of tube and just vent it outside, and hopefully that'll get rid of any nasty fumes. And just get a little bit of airflow in here without it being too much airflow that it um, overcools the printer and upsets that. So that's another job I have to do is finish building that. The Enigma, I'll finish printing this, uh, reassemble that, reassemble the rest of it. I still need to do uh, fix up the wiring but Time to start doing the rotors next, I think.